Hello and welcome to day four of Tiny Code Christmas. Today we're going to take a look at a classic demo scene effect, a plasma. But first, we're going to cover some general theory around the trigonometric sine and cos functions. So stick around for that, and then we'll get into the platform specific implementations. Let's take a look at the sine and cosine trigonometric functions. This is a circle, and it is a circle with a center point of zero, zero, and a radius of one. Now, if we take a look at the values for this circle, we can see that at this point here, it is one on the x-axis along here, and it is zero on the y-axis. And as we move around the circle, we'll see that there's points here where it is zero on one. So zero on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, minus one on the x-axis, zero on the y-axis, and zero on the x-axis minus one on the y-axis. This unit circle is what gives us the sine and cosine values. The sine and the cosine are derived from the triangle that is formed with this point. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse and the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I leave this animation run, you can see that we have an angle in radians in the first instance that is increasing. And you can see a radian is an angle that is, and if I, I stop it here when it gets around to approximately one radian, that is the angle of when the arc here on the circle is one radius in length. So radius in length, one radius in length, one radius in length, and this is one radian. And you can see here, that's the equivalent in degrees. The diameter of a circle fits into its circumference 3.14 times, which is where we get the constant pi. And since we're dealing with radians, there are two pi radians in a circle. So the easiest way to think of the sine and cosine functions is that the cosine function will give us the x coordinate of this current point on the circle at this specific angle. So at an, uh, an angle of 0 0.92 radians, it is going to give me a cosine of 0 0.61. And that will essentially give me the x coordinate of this point. And the sine then will give me the y coordinate of this point. So that will give me 0 0.8. And if I run it forward a few steps, you'll see those values increase. And if I can manage to stop it exactly at the top, you'll see that the sine value goes to one exactly. And now we can see that the sine value is approaching zero. The cosine value is approaching minus one. And as we continue on with this, the cosine value is approaching zero and the sine value is minus one. And we go right back up to zero degrees. And we'll see that the cosine in this case is one and the sine is zero. So if we just take a look at the orange sine dot over on the right hand side, you'll see that this just traces the y value and it has this nice kind of a smooth uh, motion where it slows down at the top slows down at the bottom before reversing. And we can take a look at the, the, the cosine as well in blue. Um, and again, as it approaches the edges, it essentially slows down and moves back. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the output of this function. When we give it an angle, the angle might be derived from time and the position of the pixel on the screen. We'll take a look at, at that. It's going to give us back a value between minus one and one for the cosine and also minus one and one for the sine. So it's up to us to take those values and do something with them in terms of the plasma effect. And we're going to take a look at that now. So stay here for the tick 80 or skip ahead to Pico 8. So before we start into our plasma effect, I want to just go over the for loops again in a bit more detail. So if we take a look at the for loops here, they start at zero and the for loops in uh, Lua are inclusive, which means that they go from zero to one, three, five, and it will hit all of those values in between, including the end values. So previously, 
when we took a look at this, we had the values 136 and 240, which are the actual width and height of the screen. But if we take a look at this in our CLS function now, if I run it, you'll see that it covers every pixel. A 0 to 135 covers the top to the bottom, and 0 to 239 covers the left to the right. You notice that I've also rearranged the for loops. When we get on to more detailed aspects of TIC80, it's better to access the screen in a manner similar to the way that it's laid out in memory. There are some instances in the future though where when we're dealing with compression, if you have to use 240 and 136 somewhere else, for example if you're using it to mod a value, that it may make more sense to reuse that value in the for loop even at the expense of some extra loops. So let's make a plasma. So um, with the plasma, essentially what we're doing is we are deciding on the color of each specific pixel and I'm going to create a variable called C to hold that and I am going to make it so that the pixel sets the X current X and Y coordinates to be C. So I am going to get the sine of X and I'm going to get the sine of Y. And to reduce the amount of code that I have to type, I am going to make sign equal to math dot sign. So I'm going to have to create a new variable called sign that will actually hold a reference to the sign function, allowing me to call that directly without having to specify math dot sign each time. Let's run this and take a look at what we get. Okay, not quite the plasma function that we were expecting, but it's a good start. The sign Values, as we said before in the intro, are between minus one and one. And if we have two sign values, that means we're going to get a maximum of two or minus two. And that's essentially the color palette that we're seeing. In terms of the colors, we have black, which is zero. We have our purple, which is color one. And then we have the gray color, which is 15. So what we're seeing here is that if we provide a negative number, and obviously because the signs can go from positive one to negative one, um, the values that we're getting here are actually going into the negative, and if we specify zero being color zero, and we subtract one from that, it wraps around, and we end up with color 15. There's approximately a range of two in the values that C could be, so if I multiply this by eight, it'll bring it up to 16 for our Sweetie 16 palette, and yeah, I think they're all there. They're very densely packed together, so what I want to do is I want to spread this plasma effect out a bit. And I'm going to do that by um, reducing the x value. I'll divide it by 20. And I'll reduce the y value as well, divide it by 20. And that should give us more pixels for each step so that we can see so um, the, the effect better. So let's take a look. Perfect. So now we can see that we have a nice plasma that transitions through all of the colors in the Sweetie 16 palette. So your challenge is to animate this plasma, but to also add as many other potential sign values and calculations as you can to make it as interesting as possible. You can shorten this further to be S, for example, if you need to save some, some more space. And today's target is 128 characters. Best of luck, hope you enjoy the challenge. So before we get into our plasma function, I just wanna talk a little bit about the for loops. So the for loops in TIC80 are what we call inclusive, which means that they include all of the values that we have here. So for example, when I go from zero to one to eight, um, that starts at zero and it includes and finishes up one to eight. One to eight is the width of the screen and the height of the screen in Pico 8. But obviously zero, zero is up in the top left and the bottom right hand coordinate is one, two, seven, one, two, seven. So while it's easier to use 128 because that's the width of the screen. Technically, we're doing one loop too many when we do that. So just to bring a better understanding of the for loops to us today, in the future, under certain circumstances, uh, when we're dealing with compression, so when we move away from the character-based challenges, it may be better to use 128 if you're also using 128 somewhere else in the program. For example, to mod modulus a value uh, to wrap something back around onto the screen after it's gone off or something like that. So we can see if I run this code, which is our um, CLS. Whoops. 
So you can see if I run this code, which is our CLS, that 0 to 127 covers every pixel on the screen. So now let's talk about Plasma. So with a Plasma, what we're essentially doing is we're setting a specific color for each pixel on the screen based on the result of a bunch of sign function calls. So I'm going to create a variable called C into which I'm going to um, into which I'm going to store my color and I'm going to set the pixel at the X and Y coordinates to C. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get um, the sine of X and the sine of Y. And let's run this and see what happens. A completely black screen. So when we're working with Pico 8, we have to know that it works in what are called turns instead of specific angles. So um, it goes between zero and one. So anytime we have a, a multiple of one, which is anytime we have a whole number here, it's going to give us back. Um, it's going to give us back zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by a value that will give us some other range of values between zero and one. So if we run it now, we have a kind of plasma at this stage. There is not that many colors present in it. So what I'm going to do to just multiply this by a certain number, we had four colors there. So if I multiply that by four, that should give us 16. That should give us the 16 colors. Um, and we can see they are present. So that is a good basic plasma effect in Pico 8. The sine values are going to give us, again, something that's fairly small, maybe between um, um, 2 and minus 2, and that accounted for the four colors that we saw there. So if we multiply that by 4, we'll get the full 16 colors. With Pico 8, negative colors count down. So for example, if I specify minus 1, here in the pixel set function, that minus one will wrap around and it'll give me color 15. So if I just specify minus one here and run it, we see that that is in fact the color for 15. So again, you've noticed that with, Pic with Pico 8 that there isn't really a nice gradient in the same way that there is with the tick 80. So Remember from yesterday, we introduced the palette function. So the best presentation of a plasma is going to have a reasonably smooth color gradient. So see if you can come up with a nice color palette or a nice rearrangement of these colors so that it gives you a nice plasma. Now that is going to eat up a lot of your characters and the target today is 128 bytes. So if you're having trouble getting everything down, getting a nice plasma with the palette changes, you can decide not to count the palette for today's challenge. Best of luck.